there are a few things that I wanted to go through today. But uh, beforehand, I wanted to, if there's anyone else that should be here, go ahead and pull them in. We're going to talk about uh, one of the topics I want to discuss is uh, divine magic. And, of course, I will answer all kinds of other questions, too. But I want to go through a little bit on divine because uh, people are misunderstanding the fact that that you know some divine magic can look like arcane. Okay, they're not. Okay, they come from a different source. The significant difference between uh, divine magic and arcane magic is that divine magic is granted by an entity or of some nature, you know, be it a deity or elemental force, like uh, the elemental lords, for example. If you're druids, they draw upon nature which is still an elemental force okay whereas arcane magic comes from within oneself okay you are channeling magic uh mana uh the weave as one as some may call it. And uh, that's the significant difference between the two. Um, some of the some of the uh, spells may look the same, okay? You just always have to keep that in mind is that the source is what is different, okay? They may look the same. They may have the same uh, visual effects. They may have the same effects across the board. But what separates divine from arcane is the source. Okay? And, uh, yes, when you think of mages, you know, you, uh, you think of you know, fireball and teleport, okay? And, you know, that's, generally speaking, that could, that could very well occur, okay? Uh, but it does not mean that you cannot have a uh, priest that, that throws a fireball. I mean, you may not think about that. You may not think, yeah, priests can't throw fireballs. Well, actually, in some cases, it's not out of the question. Let's say that you have Hestia or Hephaestus as a deity. Okay? Well, they're fire gods. So they are going to have fire magic. And uh, generally speaking, you know, I mean, it's not going to look the same. It might not look like a ball of fire, okay? Uh, this big ball of fire comes at you, but it doesn't mean that they can't have that. You know, they may have, um, it might be a, wall of flame that comes at you or or a uh, meteor that comes out comes out of the sky and drops on somebody's head or a uh, a hammer made of flame that just smacks you know that just uh, appears and pounds somebody and burns them down okay um, or a fan of flames, you know, 
Fan of Flames is a relatively popular um, mage spell. But a, uh, a fire priest, you know, like, like I said, Hestia, Hephaestus, um, they could very well have Fan of Flames as, as a spell. Now, here's another significant difference, okay? Is that mages use schools of magic, okay? Abjuration, evocation. Uh, you know, there's eight of them. Necromancy, okay? Whereas, in the case of priests, they their deity has a particular domain or domains and they control spheres of magic okay um like we're since we're talking about fire um that would be the elemental sphere of fire as a uh, as a sphere that they control so a priest is only going to get spells from the spheres that their priests control. Example, Aphrodite is not going to give you elemental fire spells. That will never happen. That is not one of her spheres. It's not that she herself couldn't call down a fireball, because she probably could. Okay? Um, but that is not one of her spheres, so she's not going to grant that to you, okay? Aphrodite is going to grant things like healing, charm, okay? Uh, Flames of Passion will probably fall under charm. <laughs> and also, she, she actually is a very good combatant. So combat is one of her spheres. So even though you have healing and charm from Aphrodite, you're also going to have combat as a possibility. They basically have a, Druids don't necessarily worship fire gods okay druids draw power from the from the elements okay uh, it is still a uh, it is still a um, element it's still a force okay it's still a force they don't have to have a fire related god okay but they do have to if a, a druid to throw fire has to be a fire druid. Now, once they get to arc druid, yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have all of them. Okay. But in the beginning, you choose a element. Okay. And if it's if it's if it's if you're a water draw druid, you're not gonna throw fire fire spells. You may have some minor access to uh can fire cantrips okay like you know lighting up a candle or something but you're not going to have major access to be able to throw a fireball got me okay yes um the deities are f more for um for clerics but divine magic works the same across the board. They are drawn from somewhere else. Like, since we're talking about that, shaman, they draw their power from the ancestors. Okay? And that is still going to be of similar nature. Okay? If uh, the ancestor is a fire ancestor, let's say that they were a blacksmith, then they might grant a fire spell. 
okay? Generally speaking, that's probably those things are not going to be across the board, okay? Um, shaman have a lot more limitations. They're more necromantic, okay, than the other priest types. You know, they do a lot of speak with dead and and stuff like that. But anyway. It does happen. You know, Beldos for your attendance. And I will we will see you, you soon. Okay. Now uh, as far as the spheres go, okay, I have been meaning to sit down with Argo. Uh, actually, did I do that? I think <laughs> maybe I did it. And, and uh, I just do so many things. My apologies. Um, I okay, I did do it. I sit down with Argo or Sab, which one or the other, and went through the Greek gods as the basic ones as to what spheres they control. That gives a general idea of everyone else, okay? There's going to be some deviation, okay? But generally speaking, it's going to be the same, okay? Like, um, Thor is Zeus, okay? So, if, uh, so all the information I gave him about Zeus is going to pertain to Thor as well. Okay. And uh, Artemis. Okay. Let's, let's say that you have uh, that you, you have um, Scotty. Okay. Let's say you have you have the uh, Nordic goddess Skadi as your deity instead. Well, Skadi is going to be yes, it's it's spelled that often way. Sometimes there's no there's not two D's, but often it's two D's. But let's say you have her. Okay. Her the abilities that she grants are going to be basically the same as Artemis. Okay. <coughs> now, um, her animal is the wolf instead of uh, a deer, but essentially it's the same. Okay. The uh, so I, I and since most people know the Greek gods, that's why I chose to go there. Okay. But when you are looking at your deity, whoever you've chosen, let's say you're an elf. Okay. And uh, you have chosen. Erdrifania. Okay. Yes, yeah, Slot are very, very different than Scotty. <laughs> but let, let, let's say that you are an elf and you have chosen Erdrifania as your deity. Okay. 
Now, Erdrifania is going to have basically the same things as Aphrodite. Okay? Does that make sense? So, who, whatever deity you've chosen, um, look at the Greek equivalent of that of that entity and that will give you the uh, the spheres that you have access to all right so let's let, let's expand that just a little bit okay deities grant six spheres but you don't get all six okay that's a you get to choose three or four from that Okay, plus all. Everybody has all, you know, which are the, the basic spells that everyone has access to, like bless. Okay, bless is an all spell. <laughs> all priests get it, no matter what. Okay, um, but aside from that, then you 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 are granted three or four. The jury is still out on that. I'm trying to decide. Uh, in different renditions throughout the hit the history of D and D, there's been um, they've granted different ones. And since we are not exactly Dungeons and Dragons, we don't have uh, the same level structure lo granted level 20, level, all that jazz. That's not a thing that we have access to. So, I modify the rules to fit into our box, for lack of a better word. And I'm kind of looking at three because I think uh, I think that four plus all is too much. Also, let me make a statement here about this since we're talking about that. The domain that your deity has will give you an extra spell. Okay? A a spell that's uniquely to that entity. Okay. That it that is in there that is part of their domain. Okay. That uh, signifies that particular entity. Um, example. Does anyone know who Morrigan is? Okay. Morrigan is the uh, Celtic goddess of death. Okay. All right. Now, yes, exactly. Now, her, per, her domain... She's a death god, obviously. Um, but And that is her domain. But uniquely, what she would give you is murder of crows. Okay? That would be her unique spell that she would give to her priests. Okay? That's her domain spell. And that is on top of the other you know, the spheres that she grants. Because being a death god, she's obviously going to grant necromancy. Uh, distinctly possible. I, um, I have uh, not read that book series. I have picked it up several times. I just never have gotten through it. Um, but anyway... Yes, uh, 
Yes, exactly. And Murder of Crows basically would make it so that you are temporarily surrounded by a murder of crows. Now, in case you don't know, a group of crows is called a murder. So, which would which would be like a, a damage shield. You would you basically temporarily have a damage shield. Yes, like like the movie Birds, exactly like that. Okay, for a short period of time. Okay, but damage shield is awesome. <laughs> you know, for all you fire mages out there, you know. Damage shield is super cool. <laughs> you know, it prevents you from taking damage for a short period of time and it damages your opponent. So, the, the spell Murder of Crows, which is also a mage spell, by the way, um, is the unique thing that she would grant. Yes, mages do have access to that, who have um, ones that have summoning because it is a on a uh, for mages it's in the conjuration summoning line okay and uh, there's a couple things that I'll talk about with mages too um, but again the significant difference between arcane magic and divine magic is that divine magic is granted by an an entity or a deified force okay it is it's not gotten through a school although as a mage you may look at it and say, oh, okay, that spell is in this school of magic. And for you, it is, mage dude. <laughs> but for that priest, it isn't. It's in a sphere. Okay? Let's talk about teleportation. Well, teleportation is obviously a mage thing, right? Okay? But... There are a few uh, pre-spells that mimic that effect. And what effect am I talking about? Going from one place to another. Yes, travel gods. A good example, Hermes. Okay? Hermes is the god of travelers. Okay? Mercury, also another name for him, okay? So, he is going to grant you the ability to go from one place to another, okay? It's not going to be exactly teleportation, okay? But it's basically going to be that. It's going to be the, uh, it, it's still going to grant you the ability to move someplace else, okay? Okay? Let's go back to Morgan for just for just a moment. Okay, now she's not a travel god, is she? No. She's a death god. But shadow and darkness belong in her spheres. So it would be possible for her to grant shadow walk. And Shadow Walk, even though it's not teleportation, it is going to mimic that ability. Walk into sh walk into one shadow and come out of another one. And appear out of another shadow somewhere else. Okay? It's Shadow Walk. is just, It's like tree walking. Exactly. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So, Rillafane Rollathil. Okay. 
Yeah, cloud walk in the same way. Rillophane Rolithil is grants druid spells. Okay, earth druid spells. And so druids have this pos same possibility too if you are uh, if you're a tree hugger. <laughs> um, walk into one tree and come out of another one. Okay? But in the, in the case of it has to fall in your spheres, okay? Plant is the sphere for that one, by the way. Okay. Nave just mentioned cloud walking. Air, the elemental air, is a sphere that would be required in order to do cloud walking. Uh, see that the problem with that is that it takes practice. Okay, um, it's not without error. You're not necessarily going to be able to know where you're going to come out <laughs> until you get really, really good at it. Okay, now if it if if you've mastered the spell. And we've talked about how, how you master spells. Then, yes. But, generally speaking, okay, generally speaking, uh, with the, uh, with tree walking, fire walking, shadow walking, etc., it's going to send you to the nearest uh, like element, okay? Let's say that um, you guys you guys mentioned uh, tree walking in pines. That is correct. Generally with tree walking, you walk into a pine tree, it's going to bring you out at the, the next closest pine. Okay? Okay. Um, we're, I, I will go ahead and answer your question about Morgan. See, she's a death god, all right? And... If you are a, if you're a light individual, if you're a good guy and you worship Morgan, hey, that's, you can do that. And she will still, she'll grant you the, still the same stuff. Okay. She's still going to grant you things that are night and shadow related because she is a, is, you know, sometimes she's called the queen of night. Sometimes she's called the shadow god. So, you know, obviously she has other names too, like, but in answer your, to your direct question, if you are a good person and you are mainly, you light stuff, but you worship Morrigan, your, your spells are going to be stronger at night and she's still going to give you shadow powers. Okay. That is, just, it's still possible. <laughs> Ivy just dropped you a great uh, a great story about teleportation, and uh, that that tell that teleportation that kind of thing that kind of story she just told you is going to be the same with any of the travel spells of a priest. Okay. You have to have one of the two, okay? As far as worshiping a deity, you have to have one of the two, okay? Example. Does anyone know what the magician's alignment is? To be a priestess or priest, yes, lawful neutral, that's correct. So, 
Should, if the magician had followers, okay, you would have to be either lawful, you have to have one of the lawfuls, either lawful good, lawful evil, or lawful neutral, or you'd have to have one of the neutrals, neutral good, true neutral, or neutral evil. Yes, the the blood knights qualify. <laughs> they are my they are my priesthood. But still, point being, whatever your deity is, you have to have one of the two. Okay. All right, Curlian Kyr Larathian. Okay, Curlian Larathian. Does anyone know his alignment? Yes, that's correct. Yes, he's generally considered chaotic good. All right. So, in theory, he could have a chaotic evil follower. Okay. It's would be very weird. <laughs> okay. Um, but if you if you really read his histories and the stories, I would consider I would consider Corell and Larathian to be lawful good, not chaotic good. Okay. Because he's He's pretty rule oriented, okay? And people that are very rule oriented are generally lawful, okay? And yes, um, he is right, okay? People generally don't get the where, what chaotic really means, okay? All right. Since we're talking about alignment, we're gonna. I'm going to make a very broad statement right here. Okay. Now, anyone who's been around me for more than a day knows I like Batman. Okay. And does Batman break rules all the time? Does he break the law? Yes, he does. But he is lawful. Because he has his own set of rules. Okay? And he follows them unflinchingly. All right? Conversely, the Joker follows no rules. In fact, he does everything he can to not to... He does everything he can to follow no rules. He is purely chaotic. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, Master Prince Duval. Just because he follows his, he follows rules, hardcore rules. Okay. And. That's why, that's why you'll never see him use a gun. He uses all kinds of other weapons, which are equally uh, <laughs> I, um, what's the best way to put it? I, I want to say the word deadly, but that's not exactly the word I want to use. But anyway, point being, lethal. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. They're equally lethal but they're not guns, okay? The Ark Elven Deity is Corellan Larathian. That is the leader of the Seldarine. <laughs> yes, that is correct. It's a little molly. But anyway, point being is that when you look at, at an individual's alignment, um, you have to look a little bit deeper 
okay and see if if what's listed is actually their alignment Kurel and Lorathian okay he's listed as chaotic good but if you actually read his storyline, if you actually know anything about him and know what he has done and where he has gone and what he does, he is lawful. He's lawful good, not chaotic good. Okay? And I'm going to make an admittance here. When some of, the, some of the deities were, the alignments were assigned to them, nearly 50 years ago it was done a little bit hastily okay it was it's like what do we think this person is okay bam research wasn't not all not every god was researched before their alignments were chosen originally okay so when you look at it when you when you pick up a uh, a book or whatever, and you say, "Oh, this person's alignment is listed as lawful evil," well, be, before you before you choose that, it, then you know do some, a little bit of research if it's really your thing. And yes, um, elves are generally considered chaotic. chaotic because they don't follow man's laws, human laws, okay? And that's why people say, okay, all elves are chaotic good, okay? But that doesn't make you chaotic. <laughs> just because you don't follow human laws, we just call, that's why I, that's why I brought up Batman, okay? Because Batman does not, necessarily follow the law being a vigilante itself is is against the law okay but he's extremely lawful okay ronin principle thank you very very that's well put ronin Okay, from uh, feudal Japan. Ronin are outlaws. Okay, but they are extremely lawful. Okay, because they have a code of honor that they must follow. Okay, just since we're talking about alignments before we go. You know, I, I want to mention one, one thing. The most unpredictable alignment is neutral evil. Okay? The most unpredictable. Because they don't really... Rules mean jack to them. A chaotic individual is going to go out of their way to break the rules. A lawful individual is going to going to go out of their way to stay in the rules. A neutral individual doesn't care either way, okay? And if they are evil, then that means they also really, they, they don't care about life or beauty, okay? Here's a significant, here's something that, significant that people don't understand is that um, one of the differences between good and evil is their feelings about beauty okay it's not just life okay all right it's all of the things that make life wonderful okay um love, uh, beauty, um, joy. That's correct. Drow are, are well, they, they are evil in the, in, as far as men, as humans think, 
okay? Because drow do not think they're evil because they are very, very into beauty, okay? In fact, some of them can be downright narcissistic. <laughs> All right. Um, what's the word? Arrogant? That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, what's the female version of arrogant? Um, uh, anyway, conceited. That's the word I'm looking for. That, that is the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And they have, you know, paintings, you know, they're very, 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 uh into beauty okay as far as arrogance having a gender it doesn't really to be you know, to be all honest but um conceited was the real was really the word that i was looking for usually when people consider someone arrogant they're usually talking about a male okay and but it the word itself does not have a gender okay but you are very very true very correct that is a very true statement it doesn't really have a gender okay <laughs> zoolander that's hilarious okay and so anyway point being when it comes to alignment Read into it a little bit before you decide a certain alignment. Okay, another reason, you know, you can always call drow evil because they are sadomasochistic and they like to kill and uh, enjoy it. But it's genetic. They can't not. It's not like, it's not like they were, they were, uh, raised to be that way okay it just is genetically they enjoy killing okay it's not societal it's genetic okay it's they enjoy it it uh the gene to kill is as strong as most people, you know, they need it like eating or breathing. Okay. It is a, uh, so yes, on that level, you can say, <laughs> you can say they're evil. Okay. But they still, but they love beauty and all the, all the other aspects of n not being evil. Okay. It's very interesting. The, uh, it's a complicated race. But anyway. Okay, back to uh, deities. So when you choose your deity and you're thinking, okay, I'm a priest and uh, I need to be, I need to have one of the two alignments. Normally, as, okay, as a worshiper, you only have to have one of the two. But as a priest, you your the one of the two can't be more than one away so like i was talking about um corona larathian right he's technically lawful good now you could worship him and be lawful evil but as a priest okay you cannot be farther than lawful neutral exactly you can only be one away as a priest as a worshiper you could you could be two away you could all right but as a priest you can only be one away so if he's lawful good you can't be farther away than lawful neutral or neutral good okay you see what i'm saying Does that make sense?
Okay. <laughs> well, technically, but really, like I said before, Kirill and Lerathian is actually lawful. Even though he's not listed that way, if you know his storyline, you know he is lawful. Because he's he's very rule oriented. Okay? He's very rule oriented. And that makes you lawful. Regardless if it's man's laws or not. He does not believe in human laws at all. <laughs> he has zero zero interest in human in human laws. Okay? Um but it, Elven laws, you just follow those by, to the T. Here's another good example of we're talking about that. Um, most Native American tribes, at least used to be, all right, they had no interest in white law and white man's law, okay, but they still had very, very strong internal rules. Red man's law, as as uh, one particular uh, Native American philosopher put it, okay, is they still have strong rules to follow. They just were not the same as uh, as the European laws that were coming across. They didn't care about those. They didn't care about um, uh, land boundaries. They didn't believe you could own land. <laughs> okay. And so uh, how can I follow that rule when I don't believe in it? And so there was a, obviously there's a conflict there, right? <laughs> but anyway, so Keep that in mind when you're looking at a at a particular deity's entity uh, alignment, as um, it might not exactly be what like what's listed. In the case of elven gods, that's going to be more likely than not. Okay, that is correct. Well put. That. As far as Native American rules, laws, okay? And uh, okay. Now, okay. <clears throat> I have basically covered what I wanted to talk about. Basically, what is I wanted to talk about if, you know, when you are a priest, your school, your spells may mirror the schools of a, of a mage. But they're not, because they're not schools. They are spheres. And mages, when you look at a priest throwing a fireball, you know, realize they're probably a fire priest. If they're not, then they're doing it wrong. <laughs> it, it is... It is possible to have flame strike. Absolutely. Okay. From a fire priest. Okay. Aphrodite's not going to give it to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, smite. Okay. Um, smite is an all spell. Okay, but for a combat, for a for uh, someone who has the combat sphere, like 
Aphrodite, for example, it's going to be a stronger spell. Okay. But they all have smite. Okay. Well, positive planar energy is not exactly correct. Um, what smite does is it focuses the domain of your priest into a punch, you know, and that of your usually of your weapon, but some people use it on their fist. It focuses the domain of your of your priest. It, exactly. It is like it is their willpower smacking somebody upside the head. Okay. So if that person is already, uh, if they already have combat, then it's going to be a stronger ability. But smite is all. So it, let, let's say, let's look at Morrigan. Okay. <clears throat> let's look at Morrigan. Um, if a priest of Morrigan casts smite, okay, then their weapon is going to look like temporarily look like a shadow hammer or whatever, okay, and it's going to smack you with smack you like you just been hit by a ball of darkness, okay. Um, Rolafane Rolathil, a priest of Rillafane Rolathil. Their hammer is going to glow. I'm just using hammer, but it could be any, whatever their weapon is, you know. Most most don't use hammers, <laughs> but, but I'm just using it for the sake of argument. Okay. But Rillafane Rolathil, their hammer would glow green and probably have um, little wispy leaves, images of leaves going all around it, you know. Um, but that's just, you know, that's just a fact, you know, the actual thing would be, you know, you would be hit as though, um, as though it, nature itself punched you in the face. Okay. Artemis. Okay. Artemis. Uh, has nature, okay, <clears throat> as her primary, okay? So if she was, and she's an archer, so she so her priests are going to use a bow. And smite coming from her, okay? Let's say, but uh, smite is a close quarter weapon. So let, we're just going to say hammer for but she wouldn't actually use a hammer. And her priest wouldn't use a hammer. Okay, but let's say for for a sake of argument, um, you're you are a priest of Artemis and you're gonna punch somebody with smite. Okay. Well, your fist is probably gonna look like the hoof of a deer temporarily as you smack them upside the head. You know? Anybody been hit by been kicked by a horse? Okay. A priest <laughs> and lived to tell if you didn't live and you're still in this room, kudos to you. You know a better necromancy than I know. <laughs> Necromancer. Okay. A priest of Artemis that punches you with smite is going to be like a horse's kick. Okay? Does that make sense to you? Exactly. Smite. Exactly true. All. Any spell that's under all 
is branded by your deity. Okay? I like, that's an interesting term and I like it. It's pretty good. Because it's going to reflect your deity. Okay? Now, I keep using hammer, so I'm, so I obviously I'm going to go back, have to use Hephaestus. Because his got his priests use use hammers, right? You get hit by a hammer of Hephaestus, somebody casting smite. What's it going to look like? Anybody take a wild guess? Do 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 do. Yes, hammer. But what is what is his domain? What does he govern? Yes. Fire. So, if you get hit, if a priest of Hephaestus hits you, that's right, it's going to be a flaming hammer. Okay? All right. What about Thor? Which is also Zeus. And they hit you, they, whatever, they cast smite on their weapon. Yes, that's correct. It's probably going to be lightning because that has a visual effect. Okay. It'll look like, temporarily, it'll look like you're using Mjolnir. You're right. Exactly. Not exactly, but you know, whatever your hammer is you're using is going to be chart looks like it's a lightning bam okay and uh in the case of zeus even though zeus is thor he he uses um he grants his priests the spear or javelin okay so if he stabs you if a priest of Zeus pulls out a spear. They're running around with a spear and they cast smite on it. it it's going to be a lightning spear. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Chances are, uh, you know, it's going to blind all the people around them. That's pretty good. That is true. Okay, but keep that in mind, you know, smite is the, uh, is, is an all spell, but it's always going to be branded by their deity. Everything, smite is, ha is a hand-to-hand, -hand, is a hand-to-hand -hand, uh, spell. So that, that's why I said in the case of Artemis who uses a bow, yes. A smite is smack. You smack them upside the head. Okay? Exactly correct. That's why I said in the case of Artemis, if she doesn't, she won't cast, you won't cast smite on her, on your, your bow. Your fist suddenly becomes like uh, a horse's kick. Okay? And that's the same way it's going to be with any range, any range weapon. Okay? Yeah, you can do that, but, but bows break. I don't know why you would want to hit somebody with a bow, you know. Although, there are, not saying that there's not special bows that don't break, you know. There are, that does exist. Depends what it's made of. And under those circumstances, yeah, you can do that. You can cast smite on your bow. And it is... Uh, it's going to have the same effect as a horse's kick. Okay? So, you just, you know, kick somebody with your bow. You know? It's still going to have that same visual effect. Yes, El Kabong uses a guitar. If El Kabong was a priest, okay, then, um, 
you know, let's let's say for for sake of argument, because he's a horse, um, that he would have Artemis as his deity. So his his guitar would smack somebody like a horse's kick. <laughs> All right, that is correct. Be funny. Yeah, that was a was always a fun, funny cartoon. All right. Anyway, uh, so keep those in mind when you're uh, when you're casting Smite or using any of the of the all of the spells in the all sphere. Okay. Now. Also remember, as a meter fighter, okay, the, the spells on your meter are going to be from your deity, okay? Now, you may think, you may be thinking in your head, well, I have... Okay, let's say you have Morrigan. We're going to go back to Morrigan for just a second. And on your HUD, you have healing. And you're thinking, is healing really a thing that Morrigan would give? Well, because it's on your meter, then it falls under all. Okay? If things on your meter are automatically going to fall under all. So that includes healing. And in the case of the high priest, that's resurrection. But they are going to be flavored, okay, by cinnamon and chocolate. No, they're going to be flavored by your deity. Okay. So in the case of Morrigan, that means when you heal someone, they're going to glow black and um, be all shadowy you raise somebody from the dead because you're the arch priest of morrigan and you happen to be and you're a high priest so you have resurrection on your hut right when they come back then you, your the visual effect is going to be them uh you know appearing from out of the ground in a uh in a stream of shadow okay and then they will be themselves a silhouette of themselves until they coalesce into who they are okay so every spell you cast that's on the all in the all sphere is going to be colored flavored what was the word that Pelly used earlier Branded is by your deity. Okay. Does that make sense? Aside from that, all the spells they grant are only going to be from the spheres that they give. Okay. You have all plus three spheres and a domain spell. So they're still pretty billy bad, okay? And they may and they may look like mages may look at them and say, dude, are you a mage? No, I'm not a mage, I'm a fire priest. I'm a shadow priest. You know? Uh I'm a water priest, whatever it happens to be. <laughs> that's right <laughs> branded that's right trademark artemis right across your face you got a you got a big old imprint that says artemis right on your forehead <laughs> yeah that is amusing and not entirely inaccurate it'll still be a hoof print it may not say Artemis on it, but it'll definitely be a hoof print. Okay? Or in the case of, uh, 
let's say Artemis's Celtic version, Scotty, then it's it's going to be a wolf claw, okay, or wolf bite. You know, you get punched in the face by a priest casting smite from Scotty because she uses a spear, so. You know, that's who she grant what she grants so let's say they punch him then their face is gonna look like they just got clawed by a wolf okay all right hopefully that gives you some understanding of how that works okay And the significant thing there is they do not have schools. They have spheres. Okay. Mages have schools. Now, a mage could very well do most of the same, most of those same things. In fact, mage, majory is broader if you're if you happen to be. A uh, you know the type that has everything you know have to be an arcanist, a wizard. They have all of the schools. They're not specialized in anything. So there's they can do some of everything, which I'm going to bring up real fast here. Yeah, that, that's true. They can't heal. <laughs> You're right. Um, but when it, it comes to specialized, a specialized mage, they don't, the reason that they, one, the prime reason that they don't get the opposite school is because you can still do the same things as that opposite school with your school, okay? Like, divination is the opposite of necromancy, okay? Necromancers cannot cast divination spells, but most, pre, most everything that you can cast with divination, you can do in a necromantic form, okay? Because divination collects information. Okay. <laughs> Not everything is opposite of necromancy. Okay. But divination certainly is. And divination collects information. No, illusion is not the opposite of divination. That is a misnomer. Okay. Um, that shows me that the uh, the lists that everyone has or has access to is not entirely accurate. I gave it to I, the other day I was talking to Argo and I gave him the full list of um and I don't think he's probably not even on. No. Um, but we were sitting down and I hashed it out to its to its fullest extent. And uh, but a lot of times when people look up the schools, you know, you see the school, you see the list from version three or you see the list from version 5 you now you see the list from version 3.5 you know because it changes all the time when you know when people when whoever's writing that book they decide to change it all right but i'm old school people okay so i use the first one Okay, 
and illusion is not the opposite of necromancy okay if you're a necromancer you necromancer you can use illusion spells I get that, okay? All right. And uh, it is possible that I, I threw that out a long time ago because it's really close, okay? Um, in fact, the only thing, the only thing different there is necromancy is versus di a divination and transmutation is versus illusion. Okay. Because... Transmutation, illusion, in both cases, you can make something else into something else and in necromancy you can gain you can gain knowledge just like you can divination okay divination can do a lot of the things that necromancy can do and necromancy can do a lot of the things that divination can do the reason the schools were made opposite was that reason okay so let me type this out so for everyone and especially you guild leads so that when you are working on them you have the official list okay Because the, they can still do the same things as the other side. It's just you do it in a different way. Okay? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> you are correct. And hey, and I tell you, it could easily have been my fault. <laughs> I am absolutely not perfect, you know? Because you know, hey, I am not perfect. I do my best, but sometimes I trip over my own feet. <clears throat> and I think I, I think I put out something. And then I'm, I find out later, oh, you forgot to tell him this thing. Okay. In the case of Oh. Dude, I did it wrong. Thank you for bringing that up. See, I I did it again. It should be transmutation 
versus enchantment. And I just put out something completely erroneous because I wasn't, I was just copy, I was just talking and did it wrong. Okay. It's transmutation versus enchantment, illusion versus conjuration. Sorry about that, guys. And like, I, like I'm telling you, like I'm saying, the reason they exist is because you can do the... Ah! And I mistyped. Ha, 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 Okay. The reason they are opposite is because you can do the same thing. With... Uh, there we go. Is because you can do the same thing with the opposite school. Okay? So, an illusionist cannot, ca cannot cast conjuration spells. But they can create those same things out of illusion. And if you get powerful enough, they're, they're real. Okay? Like a an arc level illusionist, they start. There's now you're looking at demi shadow magic, and shadow magic. Okay, so not only are you making the person believe that what you're doing is real, it actually is. Okay, does that make sense? So, yes, thank you for smacking me in the head just then and let and get me uh, back on back on track. Illusion is versus conjuration. Transmutation is versus enchantment, because in both cases, you are altering something else. OK necromancy versus divination in both cases you are gaining information okay evocation versus abjuration in both cases you are causing something to be that wasn't there that wasn't there before okay I hope that the actual list, <laughs> even though I just fumbled it a couple of times, my apologies. I hope the actual list is out there. Jill of Nine Tails, are you in body there? Are you? Okay. Can you type out the officially what I just said rather than all my stumbling? <laughs> if you would be so very kind. There we go. Thank you. All right. That is the official list right there. Okay. All right. Now, uh, as far as the spheres of priests, okay, they, okay, if you look them up online, okay, you're going to see mage schools, and that's not right, okay? If you look up uh, the spheres, of priests you look up spill their spells and you're going to see the mage school associated okay you're going to see the mage school associated but that isn't 
accurate, okay? Priests do not have access to abjuration, okay? Priests do not have access to those eight schools there. They use the spheres, which is entirely different. The visual effects may be the same. Okay. So, would you like me to throw out the the all of the spheres? That would that help you? Okay. Number one is all. Okay, because everybody has that one. Okay, that's on top of the three that you get. Okay. All right. And then there's animal. Astral. Charm. Combat. Creation. Divination. Elemental. Which is subdivided into all the elemental types, but it is, you know, guardian. Healing, necromantic, plant, summoning, light, and darkness, which are opposite of each other, so... You know, if you want to subdivide light, it's also darkness. Weather. Thank you. Thank you, Niff. Law and chaos. Travel. Law and chaos, um, not just chaos, my apologies, was for the writing there. Thank you. War. And wards. Now, some priests are uh, like Thoth, for example. Okay. He's the god of magic. Okay. So one of his spheres is going to be wards. So you're actually going to be able to do stuff like mages because you are cuz you're priest cuz you are a priest of the god of magic. Life and death are under necromantic. Both of them. Yes. If you're a priest of a god of magic, you're going to have some mage kind of stuff. Okay. We're, we're closing in 10 minutes anyway. My apologies uh, to everyone who is still here. Um, I know I've kept you 650 million years. Um, but I do appreciate you uh, being here today. Okay. And... 
da Ok. Let's see. I know I put out a, a lot of information today. So um, I don't expect er everyone to be able to absorb all of that uh, all at once. But those are the spheres all the spheres that doesn't mean that your deity has them all okay they will have six and then you get to choose three okay uh i gave i broke down the greek gods specifically and Sab has that list. Okay. And I think I I also have Asmodeus on there because core. <laughs> but I broke down the uh, I broke down the Greek gods basically. So uh, all you high priests, grab Sab and get that list. And then if you uh, have questions about a particular entity, Asmodeus also has a charm. You know, they, have, they give you six. But combat, war, elemental, charm, necromancy, and light and darkness, I believe, are his, off the top of my head. You know, his element would be fire. Yes, you're correct. Yes, the Greek gods, what spheres they have. Okay, not because, and I chose the Greek gods because everyone knows them, basically. Okay. All right, um, and this is what I was trying to tell you earlier. The reason I chose the Greek gods is because they, everyone knows them, and you can take your god and and pick the one that fits your particular one, because the all the gods are just ethnocentric versions of each other. Okay. Um, so whatever god you have there is going to be a greek equivalent okay even if you even if your gods are non-human there's going to be a greek equivalent they'll be altered by the they'll be altered that doesn't mean they'll be disallowed all right example if you have a lawful good god god of death which do exist okay they are still going to grant you necromancy and death spells okay it's just they're they are going to be altered to fit into the uh into that god's influence exactly because yes magic itself has no alignment the you just <clears throat> whatever spheres that individual has is going to color that entirely okay And, uh, you know, I broke it down in the, in the Greek format 
to help beyond that. That is correct. What Nif just said, a cleric of Asmodeus would resurrect someone in a, plu in a plume of raging fire. And yes, they'd probably be racked in pain and be screaming and everything else. You know, but they'd be back alive. Okay. So the spheres of a of a priest of a spheres the spheres of a deity are the only ones the priest can select from. Okay? But everyone gets all. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Each deity has six and you get you get to pick three. So they are individualized depending on you. Okay? But you only have uh, six to choose from. I gave you a list of like uh, 18, something like that. What was that? What's that overall number? 19. Thereabouts. Okay? And of those 19, six of them belong to your deity. Three of the ones of your deity you get to choose. Plus, you get a de domain spell. Okay? You get a domain spell on top of that. And then everyone has all. So hopefully that helps everyone understand. Hope it makes you mages understand priests a little bit better. And you, and you priests can understand each other yourselves a little bit better okay <laughs> that was funny <laughs> uh Okay. Any questions? My, I, I'm going to close this in two shakes of a lamp still. I was planning on closing in two minutes because I have a client in 15. Um, any questions for about all the things that we talked about? I know it was a lot of information. And uh, my apologies on the on the mage school confusion that I made. <laughs> and, but fortunately, because fortunately Molly smacked me upside the head and uh, I was able to fix that. So thank you very much for that. That was good. Appreciate it. Um, Hey, not every, not every day you get to smack the magician upside the head and he thanks you. So, hey, you know, there's that. <laughs> uh, I probably see your first follower will probably be Fido. Maybe spot, but keep an eye out, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, Molly, I'm glad that you asked because see, the thing is, hey, people, I teach Socratically, okay? And the reason I do that is because I'm not perfect, okay? Elves in general are mortal gods. They do not have followers. <laughs> but 
And it is Spot and Fido are still going to follow you around. Because they can be your followers. They'll be alright. Yes. Unless you're on YouTube. Then you're gonna, you might have followers. You know. And yes, there are stalkers too. <laughs> and I, I guess that qualifies as a follower, doesn't it? Okay. All right. I am going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this because I have a client uh, in, in just a few minutes. I need to have a cigarette before I, before I have my client. Because it can't do those things at the same time. It's just not possible. Um, Bell Doss for your attendance. If there are any additional questions, um, there are a variety of people that will, can get to me. Definitely, all you pre, all you, uh, all you priests, especially you high priests, look up Sab. She has the base list. Bell Doss for your attendance. Fendous for now.